this is Larry Wessels, director of Christian Answers of Austin, Texas, Christian Debater. The video you are about to see is most fascinating from my perspective. As many of you know, I have been doing Christian evangelism since the year I became a Christian in 1981. Over all these years, I've been able to hear about various conversions to Christ as a result of our ministry work. One I particularly remember is of a man who was converted to Christ while watching our four-hour video series on cable access television called The Biblical Doctrine of Hell. He said that this series scared the hell out of him. And what was exciting is that he later went to a seminary and then became a pastor of a Baptist church in Oklahoma. Wow, what a chain reaction. As a result of watching our videos on YouTube about the Jehovah's Witnesses, within the last two years I've heard of two people who came out of the Jehovah's Witnesses after having been in that religion for over 50 years each. Here's our playlist on YouTube called Dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses Watchtower Society with uh, numerous videos on that subject. Anyway, to make a long story short, I could go on and on about the things the Lord has done in people's lives over the past 33 years I've been doing this. But during that time, I've never had anyone who has been watching our videos either by cable access television or the internet actually make a trip here to Austin, Texas just to thank me. And basically, they don't need to. They could just as easily praise God for what he has done for them, wherever they happen to be. Nevertheless, one of our viewers decided to make an extraordinary trip here to Texas just to thank us, and this is what the video you're about to see is all about. I was notified of this video before this particular viewer actually arrived here in Austin to meet me. I want to take this opportunity to thank Pastor Mark Red of Bayshore Baptist Church in LaPorte, Texas, for giving our ministry permission to play this video on our YouTube channel, See Answers TV. The special viewer in this video named Camille Jolie came from just outside of Paris, France, took a three-week-long trip across the Atlantic Ocean on a cargo ship, and landed in Laporte, Texas, where by the providence of God, she met Pastor Red at a Starbucks there in town. The video itself will tell you the rest. Here's a photo of Camille as Pastor Red saw her in Laporte, although I shot this picture of her later after she had arrived in Austin. I was able, by the mercies of God, to produce a couple of videos with her in our studio, as you can see by these photos, including a video we went on to produce with Brother Richard Bennett, as you see here. Having talked to her about what videos she had been watching of ours there in France, it turns out she watched the many videos that I have produced with Rob Zins concerning Roman Catholicism. All of these are located on our playlist dealing with Roman Catholicism, idolatry, and the Virgin Mary, with 104 videos and counting at the time of this recording. This same playlist also has many videos we have of former Roman Catholic priest for 22 years, Richard Bennett. Not only that, but Camille liked our call-in shows called Citywide Call-In Bible Answers TV Show with David Krill and myself. And this is a show which we produced for over 13 years on public access television in Austin, Texas, which broadcast to a potential viewing audience of 300,000. We dealt a lot with Darwin's theory of evolution in these shows besides a bunch of other topics. As long as I'm mentioning some of our shows, I might as well mention our playlist called Dealing with God-Hating Atheists, Agnostics, Know-It-Alls with 17 videos. 
Since Camille came out of an atheist background, as you will soon learn about. With all this said, please give ear to Pastor Red and his unexpected guest, Camille Jolie. When I heard Camille's testimony for the first time here in this video before I actually got to meet her a week or so later, her testimony really did bring a few tears to my eyes. Please listen now and hear Camille's heart-touching story. Unusual, we've been using our Wednesday nights to go through the book of Acts. And uh, we've really had an amazing time. We go through a chapter each week, and we're up to about chapter 22, 23, where Paul is in, 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 in Jerusalem. And uh, he's just gotten there, and he stands, and he says, and that's where we stopped. And he's still going to have to wait another week. Uh, but one of the things that um, when I was a little boy and going to church and even a youth, they used to tell me, make sure that you're always ready to give your, your testimony. And that was the, uh, the, the churchy word. You need to give your testimony. And, and, uh, and, and, and we've thrown that word around a lot. And, you know, there's legal connotations about when you go in and you give your testimony, so on and so forth. But really, the whole matter of the fact is, is that giving a testimony is nothing more than, than telling your story. This is what happened to me. This is what was going on. And I got to looking in the book of Acts, and I want you to take your Bibles and go ahead and go with me to the book of Acts if you've got one. And, uh, 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 well, if you've got a Bible, you've got the book of Acts. But anyway, uh, go with me to Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 22, we looked at this last week. And uh, in Acts chapter 22, um, in verse uh, uh, 3, Paul begins to say, uh, and he's talking in Aramaic, and he says, I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia. I was brought up in this city under Gamaliel. I was thoroughly trained in the law of our fathers and was just as zealous for God as many of you are today. And he tells his, his story. That's all that he was doing. Now, there's other times that he preaches, and there's times that he writes letters, and there's times that he communicates to the churches that he, that he founded. But right then, he was doing nothing more than saying, this is my this is my story. And, and, and so you go on a little bit further, and then you go over into Acts chapter, Acts chapter 25, or Acts chapter 26. He's before Agrippa, and Agrippa's addressing him, and we'll see this in a few weeks. And then in uh, verse 4, he says, Now the Jews all know the way that I have lived ever since I was a child from the beginning of my life in my own country and also Jerusalem. They have known me for a long time, and I can testify if they are willing that I live to the strictest sect of our religion. I lived as a Pharisee. What's he doing? He's telling his story. Now, guys, everybody in this room has a story. And it doesn't have to be all that impressive. You don't have to. Uh, I, I, I can remember the running joke that uh, when I was a little boy, I wandered away from God. I ended up in prison. I did terrible things. I drank. I smoked. I kissed women that did. And then, and then. I got into the fourth grade. You, know, you don't have to embellish your testimony. You just have to tell your story. Now, there's a reason that I'm telling the story of telling the story. Uh, this morning, I went into the office and was taking care of some stuff. 10 o'clock rolled by. And uh, uh, when Richard's in time, 10, 1030, one of us texts the other one. And usually it contains four letters, S-B-U-X which means, are you ready to go get a cup of coffee at Starbucks? Either I text him or he texts me. It's just the way of the world. So I texted Richard and I said, Starbucks? He said, yes. I said, meet me down at Kroger's in a few minutes. And so it was a beautiful day and we went down to Kroger's and we sat outside. Uh, I had my cup of coffee. Richard had his cup of coffee. We sit out there and we solve the world's problems. Uh, we do. Uh, if, if, we, if we run out of the world's, then we just start on Richard's. That's usually harder than the, than the world's. But anyway, so, so we're just sitting there talking, and, 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 and we're just enjoying the beautiful weather that's outside. And I, I look kind of toward the, is that, that's not the south, that would be the east. I look down the east, and I'm looking down, well, no, I'm pointing east. I'm pointing west, but talking east. I look to the east. 
Is that good? Am I, am I good now? I look down in front, of, in front of Kroger's and I see this girl walking in front of Kroger's and, and she has a humongous backpack and a guitar and a bag and everything about her says, I don't belong here. Everything about her. Now, I'm used to seeing that when I'm in Ethiopia or, or I'm traveling someplace. You, you see people in backpackers. You, you see backpackers that are traveling, and they're usually young, and, and, and they stay in hostels. You stay in hostels, yes. And, and, and you go to all these places. They travel all over the world. But you usually don't see them in front of Kroger's in Laporte, all right? You don't have a lot of backpackers that say, I'm going to travel the world, and I'm going to go to Laporte. And when I get there, I'm going to go to Kroger's. I mean, it just is unusual. So I, I looked at Richard, and I said, She's got a story. She's got a story. And Richard goes, oh, not again. Hey, Richard hates it when I do this. So she walks up a little bit uh, 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 closer, and I, I look at her, and I say something along the line of, hi, how are you doing? And what on earth are you doing here? Or how did you get here? And, of course, it's like, oh, my God. This weird man's talking to me. What do I do now? They warned me about this. Where's my mace? You know, whatever. And she, 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 she said something, and I said, well, I'll tell you what. Have a seat. Um, I, I want to hear your story. Let me buy you a cup of coffee. And she said, green tea. And so I went in, and I got a big old, old gully washer green tea. And so she sat down, and I said, what are you doing here? And she goes, I just got off a container ship. And I said, okay. She goes, I'm on my way to Austin. Okay. What's in Austin? Well, there's this church that put their videos on the internet. And I learned more about Jesus and learned more about what it means to be a Christian. And I just want to go and thank them. Now, at this point, I've not introduced myself. All I am is this good-looking stranger from Texas. This is my story. I'm going to tell it. And, and, so, and, and, and so Richard and I, you, you know, are, are, are out, out, out in the parking lot and we're, we're sitting out there and all this stuff is stacked up and, and we're talking. And so I said, hey, that's about the first 10 minutes of the story. You're going to get to tell this again from your perspective. And anyway, so, so, so we're going on. We're having this great time. It's just it's my introduction. It's my story. And so I said, tell me your story of how you found Jesus. And for the next 20, 30 minutes, Richard and I were just stunned to hear this young lady named Camille, her story of how she came to know Jesus. Now, let me tell you something about Camille. She's never talked in front of church people before. And y'all are some of the weirdest looking church people she's probably ever seen. But we've been conditioning her with Richard all day long, so she's okay. She is very nervous. She does not talk Texan much. We did take, guess where we took her to eat lunch? El Toro's. So we're going to, we're going to introduce you. So anyway, I've asked Camille to simply come and tell her story tonight. And in the morning, we're going to take her down to downtown Houston, put her on the mega bus and send her toward Austin so that she can go up there and complete and continue her journey. But tonight she's here. Let's give Camille a Bayshore Baptist Church welcome. Camille, come on up here. You can sit, you can stand, whatever you want to do. It's all you. I'm going to get out of the way. Go ahead. You're doing great. Well, Mark, thank you so much for this introducing. Uh, good night, everyone. My name is Camille, like Camilla, but in French. I come from France, and I'm a long way from home, but in the same time, I'm like at home. Just as Mark said, I don't speak much Texan, and I don't trust in my skills in English either, but I just trust that the Lord will put words into my mouth uh, and that his Holy Spirit will brew 
in this um, muddy water that I am, just to go straight to you somehow, even a few words. I just pray that he who has begun a work in me will bring it to completion for his appearing. So, um, I grew up in an atheist family, meaning my parents do not believe in God. And uh, of course, I love them. And uh, they were really good to me all my life. But growing up, I heard a lot of mocking towards the religion. And uh, I never heard anything about God and about Jesus and uh, about sin also. So I went to school and there I learned that men come from monkeys. And I believed it. I thought, oh, that's why I'm more clever than my parents. So, yes, it, uh, pride began here when I was uh, around six. And um, from there, uh, I, was, I was clever at school. It was easy for me. So pride, again, came in this way. And also, quite early, I, well, let's say I was fashioned by the world. And in France, um, Maybe it is the same thing here, but um, we have medias and they are showing us a way uh, which plants seed in our hearts and make us pursue after appearance and fleshly interests. So I fell into those traps and I was not protected by the knowledge of the word of God or anything. And um, so maybe my parents wanted to protect me, but I had learned to lie to them so that I could do what I wanted. So, okay, then um, after I graduated, the Lord was already working in my heart, but I didn't know because I was looking for something. Um, but I did not know it was the truth in Jesus Christ. I did not know that. What I know is that it was here, <laughs> just here. I could not see it, but it was here. And it was simple, and it was beautiful, and it would make sense out of things, but I did not know what it was. So I started investigating in psychology, philosophy, well-being, astrology, occult stuff, you name it. I was just browsing through the libraries and the weirdest stuff. Um, then I studied music, classical music, and the Lord used it. Actually, three things, um, if I'm going to make this clear, because I, I'm so nervous that uh, <laughs> I, I, really, I really don't know if any of what I'm saying make, makes sense to you or if you can understand my accent, but I'm going to try. Um, God used music because I was studying music and I was loving it very much. Actually, music was the thing I went for whenever I needed comfort or rest or anything. It was like, uh, it was very important for me. And um, also, the Lord used, um, actually, I could sense there was something wrong in the world because of evil. This, I could see all this evil, especially after 9-11. I was 18 at that time, and it just shocked me so much that I thought there is something wrong. But when I, I investigated, uh, I found out it was even more wrong than I f what I thought, for example. And also, um, in 2008, my grandfather died. And then it struck me that, yes, uh, 
we're all gonna die. So uh, I, I felt a rush to search even more for the truth. But as I told you, I was a student in music and I, I signed for this class. It was Gregorian chant. I had never heard of it. And uh, I said, okay, what's that? I'm gonna check this out. So I went and I liked it. And the lyrics, I mean, it was all in Latin, but uh, I, I had translations and it was from the Bible. So I said, the Bible? Yes, well, I, I'm gonna try to read it. So I opened first page. Uh, in the beginning, God created and God created man. And I said, well, no, uh, Big Bang and all that stuff, right? So I, I could not believe because of this evolution theory stuff that was planted in me and also others. But um, what I'm trying to say is that step by step, God has infused faith into me so that he could draw me to him, to his word, and to his incarnate word, Jesus. So I was gifted in Gregorian chant, weirdly enough. It was really weird. So <laughs> this conductor from the Gregorian choir in Paris, he told me, you know what, you will come and sing with us. I said, but sir, you understand, I, I am from atheist family, how can I come and sing with you? He says, he just smiled and said to me, you have so much to learn. He, and I was amazed by this answer. So I say, yes, I will go. And I found myself into, in church for the first time, actually third time, because one time I, I had to come to a marriage, one time to a funeral, but uh, I, I did not understand anything. And then I found myself into church. And there uh, I was at church. So I said, okay, now I'm, a, I'm like a new concept. I'm a practicer, but unbeliever. Well, it balances the so-called believer who, does, who do not practice, so okay, I will, <laughs> I will just stick to it. And um, at that moment, I, I was trying to learn how to pray, but uh, I, I did not know. And I was a guitar teacher at that time, so I met one friend, and uh, it was my first Catholic friend, and uh, I think she was a believer also. So she just told me, uh, you just say, sorry, please, thank you to God. And this is praying. And actually, this helped me a great deal. So I began to pray. And then um, it kind of struck me that I was created. And it struck me like that. One time, uh, I was trying to pray, and I say, yeah, it's so beautiful, life. Life is, it, it is, it is not by random process, it is not by accident. We have been created, and then I remembered that when I was a really little girl, I did believe just by walking in the garden and looking at the creation, it was so beautiful. I say, yes, there has been a big misunderstanding, I, I thought, I did not believe, but actually I do, I am, I, I, I believe in God. But I did not yet know that the Bible was the word of God and that I, I was not too sure about Jesus also. So this was around 2008 or nine. And then um, in my personal life, uh, things got really wrong and uh, I ended up um, in a not good relationship and uh, actually I was arrested and like that and I lost sleep, I lost, I lost reason and I ended up in the hospital. And uh, if it wasn't for God, I would not make it, but he kept me and also he preserved me. And at that time, I could do nothing because I was medicated uh, big time. I, only I could sing Gregorian, this I could do. It was really great comfort. And 
some verses of the Bible were begin, beginning to work in me. I was wondering, why does it say that? Search for the Lord while it, he can be found. I said, well, what do you mean while he can be found? So, yes, why, why does this mean? And also, I felt warmness in my heart when I read the Lord saying, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. So these verses were beginning to be in my heart. So at that time, uh, I figured, OK, uh, I would like to be baptized. But I was in the heart of the Catholic Church in France. And uh, this is a whole process. You have to go through catechism. And uh, how can I say? The priests that I encountered at that time, I was not uh, interacting with them very much. And I, have, I had all those questions because I, I did not understand many things about the Catholic Church. I, I could not, uh, I was disturbed by all the images, for example, in the buildings, the statues, and the, even on the cross you have, Jesus is on the cross, and I was disturbed by that. Okay, also praying to Mary, I, I was uncomfortable with it, and especially the Pope. I thought, okay, but w what is this? I did not understand, and when I ca came to a priest with all these questions, they were saying me, it's all right, it's because you don't have enough knowledge, or you don't have enough uh, catechism, and like that, they wanted uh, to, bring me by knowledge, but the scripture says that you have to be like a little child to see the kingdom of God, humble like a little child, and also that knowledge puts up, and it is charity that edifies, so I could not reconcile that. So um, this was about uh, 2011 or 12 or like that, and then I, I started teaching Gregorian chant, and I found myself in those monasteries with the nuns. And, uh, and then again, uh, I did not understand how this was following the Lord closer. And even one time I had this dream, I was a nun myself in the dream, and I was uh, really mean and say like that, do this, do that, and it was so harsh and cold, and when I wake up, I was afraid that the Lord would, would call me, because I thought that when you were called by the Lord, it was called to go to a monastery. So I was really confused about that. And uh, I was, yes, really confused at that time. And then um, I volunteered to go to Africa and teach Gregorian chant again. And then <laughs> I found myself in a terrible situation and um, I could not confess to a priest also because I was not baptized, because uh, as an atheist family, my family did not baptize me, so uh, I was without baptism. I could not go to a priest because it was sacrament. I, I needed to go to baptism first, and all these sacraments. But I really needed some help. So I went directly to God for help. And then something happened. I felt uh, like a deliverance. And uh, it was really amazing. Then uh, I was very sick in Africa, and when I came back in France, I was exhausted. I, I could do not many things. But what I wanted, only thing I wanted, was to study the Bible. So I thought, okay, I really need to be baptized so that I can serve the Lord. I, I want to be helpful. I was still in this mindset that I had to earn it. I had to work for it. And uh, so I, I tried hard and hard, and I exhausted myself. And the only relief and rest I had was through reading the scriptures. 
But when I came back in France, my French Bible was uh, stored in my parents' house. So I thought, yeah, why not get an English Bible? It will shed a new light on the text and like that. So I got an English Bible. And actually, it did speak to me. And um, I researched for Bible studies, and I came across those videos on the internet. Many came from uh, ministries that are here in the US. And uh, it really helped me a great deal to understand that the Bible was the word of God. In its construction, in its texture, in its revelation, this word will never pass away. And I started clinging and more and more the, the Lord was already guiding me through this, uh, this understanding. And so I, I thought, okay, I, I really need this baptism. And I, I met a priest in France and he was willing to baptize me, but it was in a Marian sanctuary. So uh, all these questions were bothering me. The date was approaching for the baptism. It was supposed to be in last November. Uh, but I could not reconcile all those questions I had about the hierarchy in the church and also praying for the dead and the saints and even the church. Because the scripture says that God adds to his church every day. It is his doing. And also it says that everyone that is ordained to eternal life believes. So I thought, but it is the other way around in this Catholic system. It is like if you work and work and work, then you will be granted some access to the kingdom of God. So I thought I was again confused. And also, um, since the Bible was the word of God, it was a big discovery. I realized that this evolution theory had brought big damage in my life. And um, in also the, the children growing up and learning this stuff in, in school, it is really dangerous for their spirit. So I researched again about this evolution creation debate. In France, we do not have that. I mean, people, they do not discuss it so much. And when you say to them, oh yes, uh, evolution theory, it is a fraud, and they say, what? You, you do not believe in Darwin? And it is very weird for them. So um, uh, I could research this through ministries that were in the US. So it was a big blessing for me. And um, <laughs> then, at, what time, at one time, I discovered an article that uh, actually it was one of the Pope, Jean-Paul II, from um, 1996. And he recognized this evolution theory. And it shattered. For me, I said, OK, the Pope is obviously not infallible. I cannot be part of this church because it would not be wholehearted on my part. Because if I join this church, and then I say to my friends, yes, but I don't believe in the Pope. I don't believe we should pray the rosary because the scripture says, do not pray with vain repetition. So, and it would, it would not be honest. So I have to leave this church. But the date for my baptism was set already. So I, um, I just pray and I said, okay, wh what should I do? And then this letter came <laughs> actually saying that, uh, well, they would not uh, want me for baptism anymore. They said uh, I had to go through this catechism for some time and they were committing me to the protection of the Virgin Mary. And I said, God, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. So I, I was not going to be part of it anymore, but I was still a singer in this church in Paris. And after, some, uh, after a few weeks, I could not attend mass anymore. It was like a theater. I was very disturbed by the, the process. Because I don't know how to express, it is difficult. But they have a way of presenting the scriptures. They are here, but I don't know how to say. Uh, it is like you don't have access to it. 
it's just weird. For example, um, they don't tell you that you can come to Jesus like that. Always they direct you to a priest. And it is good. I mean, many people are blessed in this way. But when you are not baptized, what can, we, what can you do? You just hear with, uh, and you say, okay, I cannot confess. And also I thought that uh, I could pray only in a building because the Lord was uh, in the building, right? But the scripture says uh, that he does not dwell in tabernacles made by men. So I was again confused. And um, at that point, it just crumbled. I mean, um, I, I finally came out uh, with those um, teachings. Um, and I found I was more like a Protestant. <laughs> it was uh, a shock because all those years in the Catholic Church, they said, uh, yes, but you know the Protestants, they, they just don't understand. They are in, they are in error. Uh, and uh, I believe that. <laughs> but actually, when the Lord delivered me, I, I felt I was pulled out of this Roman system. And then I understood that we could go to Jesus without anything. And the scripture says, he is our only mediator. He is the mediator between man and God. It is him, nothing else. And we can go directly to him. And so he showed me that I had put all this sacramental system between me and him. It was like I had put my trust in man. I had put my trust in a system. And it just crumbled before my eyes. I mean, uh, I could go directly to him. And he is the only way. And he is the only truth. And in him, we have redemption. And it was amazing to, to feel that it all opened up. And then he showed me also that no matter how hard you work, it is not like that. And because if any man could work out his salvation, he would not have needed to give himself up for us. His death would not have been necessary, but it was the only way. So I, I thought at that time, okay, uh, <laughs> I have to go and thank those churches in the US. Just tell them that uh, their teachings that we are saved by grace through faith so that anyone can come to the Lord. And it is his doing. He gives faith to anyone according to his plan. It is just wonderful, beautiful, simple, true. It was what I had been looking for. All my life I wanted to put my trust, but I was actually putting my trust in my parents that I did not work in my teachers, in some boyfriends, in, some, in myself, in the Roman Catholic Church, but my soul still, still thirst. I was thirsty for something. I had no rest. And he showed me that in him there is rest. And I can cling to his promises of eternal life. And this is the joy. <laughs> this is the Lord's doing. And I want only that he is glorified for this. And so I bought a ticket to come to the US. And I thought, OK, I will uh, go by a ship because <laughs> I don't like flying so much. It's like uh, too, too fast. and. Uh, <laughs> I thought also it might be like a, a good opportunity to have a retreat and read his word and pray. So I embarked uh, one month ago in Le Havre in France and uh, I was really scared but it was great opportunity to trust him. And he, 
Anytime I'm scared, I can just trust him for guidance because he knows better. He made me, he created me, he redeemed me, he gave himself up for me, he did everything and he kept me until now and he gave his word and I just have to trust him no matter what. And uh, also, <laughs> I, I, it is difficult because uh, <laughs> I was really scared because I was all alone, but actually I'm not because he is with me and he will never leave us or forsake us. So it is this the reason of my joy. And it's privilege for me to, to tell you this tonight, <laughs> even if I, I don't really know what to tell you except that it's all he's doing. And the moment I embarked on the ship, he blessed me with two uh, brothers and we could share his word on board. It was amazing. Uh, this engineer, this was a member of the crew, he also ministers uh, to, the, to the crew. And uh, <laughs> on the second day, also one other member of the crew, it was the cook on this ship, he came to me and he says, yes, uh, are you a Catholic? I said, no, I tried it and it did not work. I said, <laughs> he said, are you a born again Christian? I say, yes, maybe, maybe, I, I hope so. <laughs> because I, I trust in the Lord only. He is mighty and uh, I, I just want to follow him. I want to know him and uh, I want to maybe go to the US. And, uh, and thank those churches and renew my life. Just forget what is behind and reach for what he's giving me from now. And uh, so we could have fellowship on the boat every day. I mean, it was just amazing. And uh, they really strengthened me and uh, also reassured me that God does have a plan for each and every one of us. And it is huge comfort to know that because, yes, I, I did feel kind of lonely. <laughs> but when, when it is trust in him, then everything unfolds. And uh, <laughs> I disembarked yesterday and I, my credit card was not working. But this really nice cab driver <laughs> the Lord put on my path so that uh, he took care of me to provide me for hotel room and everything. So I thought, okay, this is just great. And in the hotel room, I, I, I started to be very scared again. But I thought, okay, what can I do? Only thing I have is the Lord. So I just kneel down and this is the answer to all my problems. And even in this hotel room, I was just by myself. He, even then, he showered me with his love. He just, he just loves me and this is incredible. I mean, it is so strong. Uh, <laughs> so I felt trust again. I said, okay, I will be guided. So I asked the Lord, should I check out this morning? And I said, yeah. Where should I go? I don't know. I don't have a clue. <laughs> so I just packed my stuff and yes, it was big back backpack and I check out. So I thought, what, what can I do now? What only thing I want to do is read the Bible with a T. So I walked because I don't even have a car. I don't have nothing. And I came to this Kroger store. I was walking and then <laughs> Some man goes, hey, what's your story? I was like, <laughs> I was like, uh, well, uh, sir, it, <laughs> it, it's a weird story because, uh, <laughs> and he says, you know what? I just, I will buy you some tea. I said, really? And I said, oh God, thank you. Because, uh, well, the, I, I have some tea now and, <laughs> then he says, okay, ha, what's up with you? What are you doing here? I'm, I say, I'm not so sure. <laughs> I, 
I'm really, I'm not so sure. I just tr trust that God will guide me, but I don't know where. <laughs> and uh, I tried to share to Mark and Richard how the Lord was drawing me to him all these years and uh, that he does have a purpose for me and that he is mighty and then he, he told me well I'm a pastor I said what you're kidding me right he says no 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 we, we, do, we have a small meeting tonight you come and uh, you will tell your story I said well, me uh, well uh, I, I, I was totally speechless. I, he says, yes, there is no accident in God's kingdom. There is no accident. Also, we were here. We did not know why, but now we know. You were here. You did not know why. Now we know. Now you know. <laughs> and God is bringing us all together. He is doing everything. And it is so glorious. <sighs> and I said, wow. Uh, <laughs> so now I'm here tonight and uh, really uh, I feel really nervous but I could not talk at all except uh, for him because I pray I just pray that he will continue to bless me as he has done so far it is just always beyond my imagination and also it says that the fearful are not accepted in his kingdom. So he always remind me that I have to trust him. Every time I'm scared, every time I'm, I have a trial, it is a good opportunity. And he takes care of everything. It is all for his glory. He has provided me all. And from now on, I just want to live a life that is pleasing to him. I just want to love him out of thankfulness with all my heart, soul, strength, mind. And uh, I just want to serve him. And since a few times, I, I do feel part of the body of Christ, which is the true church. It is not a matter of denominations, uh, although it is dangerous in the Catholic Church because you have this salvation by work, which is kind of implied, and it is dangerous for the mind because then you don't see the simplicity of the devotion to Christ, which is by which we are saved. So it is really in the heart because God does not look at outer appearance. He does not look at what man looks at. He looks at the heart. And it is directly between us and him. And I really don't know what will my life be from now on. But now I do feel maybe I am part of his body. Maybe I am. And so it is. I want it to be the source of, of my joy from now on so that I, I can give to any man that asks me, why are you smiling? Look at the circumstances. Look at the evil in this world. Yes, yes. Because this world, we know now, thanks to his word, that the prince of the air is controlling the place. So, but one day will be real justice and uh, real glory to him. So I am I'm really, I, <laughs> I don't know how to put my story because I, I did not prepare. So if you have any questions, maybe you can ask me. And I thank the Lord very much that he brought Richard and Mark <laughs> in my path today. It is wild. And <laughs> I thank you so much for listening, for welcoming me. And it is so kind. I thank the Lord that he is here. You did amazing. You did great. Now you know. Isn't that cool? That is just amazing.
check out our websites, BibleQuery.org. This site answers 7,700 Bible questions. HistoryCart.com. This site reveals early church history and doctrine proving Roman Catholicism is not historically or doctrinally viable. MuslimHope.com. This site is a classic refutation of Islam, a counterfeit religion created by Muhammad. Free newsletters are also available. 